use. So let's talk about gastrointestinal disorders. So gastrointestinal disorders are anything from bloatiness, diarrhea, constipation, indigestion, um, frequent burping, gas, uh, burning sensations, bloatiness, um, like a, even a medley of a com combined combination of all those symptoms. My name is Dr. Romina Gassemi, and every Wednesday I've dedicated my time to come to you and take a topic that has been of interest and talk about that and give you health hacks that could help you prevent further damage or put you back in charge. Based on over 25 years of clinical experience, uh, going actually to 26 uh, now, it has become it has become to my attention that the underlying cause of most digestive problems lay back goes back and tracks back into the nervous system. The only difference is the nervous system that we're talking about is not how your emotional nervous system, but also your physical nervous system. So let's discuss that further. These are the typical signs and symptoms of gastrointestinal disorder. Now, ironically enough, if you have any pets, the same symptoms also occur in your, uh, in your pets, whether you have a dog or a cat, right? But that is, these are indication of gastrointestinal problems. Now, vomiting and diarrhea, definitely we're talking about the whole entire digestive tract because the vomiting would be like around the esophagus, upper abdominal region, um, upper stomach, and then diarrhea, we're talking about more towards the end of your gastrointestinal tract. Uh, flatulence is very much related to your digestive tract plus your gallbladder. Blood or mucus in your feces is very much related to a lower GI or upper GI. It could easily be detected by a stool test. Just to let you know, if, your blood, if the blood in your stool is uh, bright red, it is towards the end of the digestive tract. So you're looking at the anal canal, the sphincters, the lower, the lower uh, large intestine. If you have more of a darker red streaks of blood in your fecal material, you're looking more of an upper GI bleeding. This is very serious. It has to be followed with uh, some sort of a di diagnostic exam. Okay. Constipation. Constipation is a uh, lack of peristaltic motions of the digestive tract and also food related or lack of digestion or lack of mobility of digestive tract. Weight loss is a big indicator that nutrition are not being absorbed. Weight gain is also another factor of gastrointestinal problems. Abdominal problems or abdominal pain is the number one indicated that there is a problem, right? We just know there's a problem. Further investigation is based on the history and the exam findings. And then again, we utilize diagnostic testing to formulate a diagnosis based on the information that we gather. So it puts you, we put the patient through a deductive reasoning based on the observation, based on the information gathered. Let's really look at the signs and symptoms. Incontinence is actually another one of problems with the gastrointestinal problem. And unfortunately, very much affected by your posture. So, and it's more common in men, in women, I'm sorry, than men. And that could be related back to the childbirth process and uh, you know the period problems or lower back issues, very much related to that. Slouching increases your abdominal pressure. This puts pressure on your bladder, which is more of a mechanical problem, and it affects the muscles of the pelvic floor. And ladies, an exercise with Kegel exercises are going to be very effective in not only helping with the, that lower, lower back pain, like below the two dimples in your back, but also will help with the distension of the bladder and also strengthen the lower abdominal muscles. Core exercises of leg lift is going to be more effective than upper body sit-ups. Constipation is one of the most common factors that we see in our population. Unfortunately, this is also affecting our children. 
So one out of seven adults are suffering from constipation. And constipation is not just the fact that you get a backup of the, the clog, the, you know, your uh, plumbing system is clogged up to say the least, but most importantly, it seriously affects your nutritional absorption in your body, creating a lot of fatigue or moodiness. They're very much related on a long term, which I'm not going to discuss it further in detail. I just want you to know. The problem is females suffer from const excuse me, constipation 60% more than men do. So we definitely want to make sure that we take care of our female and also children. Unfortunately, we are entering an era of children who are raised with smart devices. And you already are seeing children that are affected by poor posture, rounded shoulders, forward head carriage, a little bit of a slump in the body, more motivated to be on their smart device, sitting and on their smart device than rather going out and playing. So we definitely, if you're a parent and you're listening, please be aware that a constipation in your child is a serious condition. The good news is it's easily taken care of. So easy, it's, it's just uh, funny how fast you could get this taken care of, all right? So dry stool, straining with the bowel movement, bloatiness, uh, typically a normal bowel movement would be about one minimal to two a day. And uh, if you're not, we're gonna discuss something later on in how to solve that solutions. Now let's talk about heartburn and slow digestion. So unfortunately, we call this gastroesophageal reflux syndrome, also known as GERD, very typical. You see 15 to 30% of US population, they have gastroesophageal reflux disorders. And unfortunately you see more of that in children compared to before, and you're seeing a lot more in adults. Now, when you're slouching, if you look at this picture, you look at her back, this is the area that we slouch. And there's more and more cases of people sitting in a poor posture that's affecting their whole, their whole skeletal and this digestive system. So these two systems are connected together through a nervous system. Now, the problem with acid reflux is uh, not only it interrupts the pH balance between your mouth, esophagus, digestive tract, but it also can totally affect your whole chemical balance of your body. So it's important that uh, we address the digestive tract, esophagus, stomach, uh, duodenum, and upper GI. So we'll keep on, keep on going further, but I want you to know these statistics that one, you're not alone. Two, it is, growing, it is a growing problem. And three, it is related to posture. So let me go further into more of a physiology of the body. You see, the main function of your digestive system is to digest and to absorb. So digestion is basically breaking down the foods into smaller molecules. It's done by your stomach and starts with your mouth with the muscles of mastication where you actually start chewing and breaking down the food. And you should be chewing at least between 10 to 16 chews before you swallow. I know some of us just have two chews and done. So just know that is going to put your body into a bloated state. So if you start chewing, you, you're already taking care of half the causes of the bloatiness and indigestion. So start utilizing those muscles of mastication and enjoy. And by chewing, just start absorbing and enjoying the taste and the flavors and the spices. If you turn it into more of a fun process, then it takes away the whole medical aspect of it away and makes it more fun. It's a great game to play with your children. When they're chewing, ask them, what do they taste? What, which ingredients do they taste? So it allows them to slow down the moment, start thinking and slow the process of mastication or breaking down food into smaller pieces. As the body goes, as the food is traveling down through your esophagus into your stomach, the food goes through this internal cavity and now the stomach works like uh, your esophagus 
pushes the food down in one direction using the worm-like actions, what we call peristalsis, peristaltic motions, kind of pushes the food down bit by bit, bit by bit, just like how a worm travels. But when it gets into a stomach, it's almost like a martini shaker. So the stomach goes in a forward and backward motion, breaking down the food almost into a liquid form. And it has to be done that way in order for the body gets passed through the duodenum where that circular area is and enters the digest, the small intestine. So the molecules and the enzymes that are secreted from your gallbladder and your pancreas start allowing the digestion process or the absorption process to take place. So now we're moving into the secondary stage. Just so you know, your digestive tract has a couple of uh, support systems from, of course, your teeth and tongue and salivary glands, and also your liver, your gallbladder, and your pancreas. Your hormones, which is like uh, pancreas is one of your endocrine glands, definitely plays a role into uh, your digestive tract. So they are not separated. So from intake to excretion, uh, so here's the process. This bottom part, like what I showed you, the esophagus moving into the stomach, that's more of a peristaltic motion. Now there is seven processes of digestion. First is ingestion, you gotta eat something. Then is propulsion propulsion where you actually move the food along the digestive tract. We call that peristalsis, like seen in this lower image right over here. Then is secretion. So now that the food is dropped down into your body, it's going down the digestive tract, there has to be a chemical breakdown. So the digestive enzymes are secreted throughout the channels and they're just thrown in there. Now, then there is the there, there's a mechanical digestion. Mechanical digestion begins from the actual chewing factor. Also the, the crunching and the breaking down and the shaking motions of your uh, stomach or what we call segmentation. Then we go into a chemical digestion. This is breaking down the food, simple molecules and entering into the stomach and the small intestine. This is where small intestine, large intestine is where most of your vitamins are observed absorbed. So if you are taking vitamin B sup supplements, whether it's B complex, B1, B5 for your hair, B3 for your nails, B6 for your muscles and your energy level, B12 for your digestive tract, be aware that your large intestine is responsible to absorption of these uh, vitamins, especially vitamin B, which is crucial for nerve and muscle cells. So if you are not digesting this properly, the money you just spend on your supplements will just become the next phase goes into defecation. So it does, never enters into your bloodstream or your lymphatic system, right? So very important that you take care of your digestive system before introducing supplements into your body. So be aware of uh, how you spend your money uh, to make it into a process that is effective for you, all right? So let's take care of the system first. One of the things I wanted to show you is here as well is that your nervous system controls this entire seven steps. Just like how your nervous system is controlling your pupil dilation, blinking of your eyes, your heart beating, your lungs breathing, your nervous system, your autonomic nervous system is controlling your, your digestive tract. So if you look at right here, where it says T1 through T to L2, all the nerve pathways that come through this autonomic nervous system affect your entire digestive tract all the way to the end. The lower tracts control the, uh, the reproductive organs. So ladies and gentlemen that are listening, when you are sitting slouch like a c-shape on your chair you're affecting right over here so a lot of people think that oh it's my iliopsoas muscle that i have this hip issues or digestive issues or my lower back just know that if you're having back pain and you have digestive problems go back to the spine 
because by correcting the spine, not only you address the musculoskeletal problem, but the side benefit is by removing the pressures on the nerves that are feeding to your digestive tract. So kill two birds with one stone and address your digestive system through the pathway or the source that it exits from, and that is your spine. So where is all this connection, right? Your body is a combination and a balance between physical, chemical, and emotional balance. When there is a balance between these three pillars of your body, your organs can function. If there is any interruption in any of these pillars, it will affect all the other ones as well. So by, put, by what you put in your body, which affects your chemical balance, it will take a toll on your physical body. But unfortunately, in the past 15 to 20 years, especially more prevalent in the past year, and I'll tell you why. In the past year, a lot of us have been forced to work from home. So we're trying to find or create a comfortable working space. But sometimes you get so lost in your work and so involved with your work that you actually forget about the way you're sitting. So your physical body, one, the fact that it's sedentary, two, the fact that it's sitting in a poor position can actually play a huge role on your nervous system. The nervous system interruption affects the chemical and emotional factors of your body because your nervous system controls the balance and the function of these chemical interactions. And then falls, falls into a negative loop. So let's take it a little bit more forward. Let me give you some visual effects. You know how you get a, a reflex, right? So the nerve cells, they take information from the tissues and the tendons and the receptors from your tendon directly go through your muscles, send the message to your brain, the brain synapses and returns back and tells the muscle to contract, right? This is a lower motor or what we call neuron or nerve cell, if it's a, more of a motor nerve action, right? But, and this is more of a physical messages or electrical messages relaying throughout your body. Then you got chemical messages or what we call uh, neuroreceptors, right? Or neurochemicals or neuron, neurochemical cells. They travel through your bloodstream. Your digestive system can affect the information that these neurons are carrying. They work slower, but they work over time. That's why you don't wake up with a problem. It usually, it keeps moving into more of a... Uh, it grows throughout time before it gets your attention. Which one of these positions do you find yourself when you're involved with your work? I'll let you choose the one that most represents you when you forget to eat and sometimes you forget to pee because you really just have to get that last thing done. So looking at these different postures, you see the first one, He's having a lot of toll on his upper back from the middle of his, uh, underneath his shoulder blades, all the way to the base of the skull, right? So we're looking at the stomach, the blood vessels to the abdomen, lungs, heart, mouth, salivary glands, tear glands, eyes. So this person tends to have more of an upper back, neck pain, visual disturbances, lack of balance coordination, headache commonly, upper GI issues. Whereas this person or that person, the lower ones are definitely going to have more of a lower back problem or maybe more these two. Do you see how the spine is more in a C position? So the ultimate effect is up upper here. Typical first symptoms are going to be lack of motivation, chronic fatigue, um, making pity, mistake, pity mistakes when you are not paying, affecting your concentration, typically a lot of shoulder, upper back problems. Don't be surprised if you feel any kind of allergy symptoms occurring all of a sudden. Your spine is ultimately an expression of how you handle it throughout the days. 
So when you are sitting in a poor position, don't be surprised if you develop digestive issues. Should you have any visceral organ problems, let's say digestive problems, respiratory problems, asthma, uh, allergies that you did not have before, um, diarrhea, constipation, bloodiness, and muscle ache, go back to the spine. And by doing some exercises that I will actually share with you below, you will notice that your systems are going back into a proper position and you also will help with your disc areas and sciatic nerve problems. Radiating pains, also known as referred pain, are another indicator that is coming from your spine caused by poor position, also included in this in the menu, we also have digestive issues, symptoms, lower back problems, leg problems, and also um, upper back or under the scapula is another big one. But these pathways, these patterns, if you have these diffuse pain patterns, always go back to the spine, always go back to your lumbar spine and your digestive tract. Now we talked about the lower back and some of us might not be sitting all the time. Some of us might just be mostly standing or are teenagers. Did you know that this forward head position really affects your upper body and that upper body has a direct impact on your heart and lung and your uh, upper abdominal problems such as acid reflux. <clears throat> now, let me share something with you. Then this is called biomechanics. Your head weighs about eight to 15 pounds when it's positioned in a neutral, you know, neutral position. This is when there's only uh, the forces from your body weight and gravity are dispersed between your discs and your joints. Therefore, you would not have any kind of overloading to the structures that are supporting you. For every one inch that your head moves forward to the alignment of the body or just a 15 degree tilt, you currently put 27 pounds of pressure on your upper back, three times more in your lower back. So when you're sitting or standing and your head is dived into your social media, you're overloading your neck and your upper back by 60 pounds, and you're overloading your lower back by 360 pounds of pressure. So if you, are, if you have been suffering from low back disc problems, don't be surprised because sitting, prolonged sitting for my attorney, accountant, uh, bloggers, programmers, administrative staff who are sitting in front of the computer, slouched over, just know that you just overloaded your disc. So don't be surprised waking up with low back problem or sneezing and your back goes out, maybe with a radiating pain involved. Bringing your body into back proper position is very important. So that's why keeping your phone or your smart device at your eye level would innately tell the nervous system that this is the proper position to be because your eyes determine where the rest of your body goes. And in young adults, it is a predisposition pre to idiopathic skeletal scoliosis. So save your children before they become my patients, okay? So let's go back to that upper cervical area. This is the normal curve in the body. This is that, the, the big circle is your earlobe. The little circle is the middle of your shoulder. This is the alignment I was telling you about and how moving your head forward can actually cause other issues in the body. And it's evident with the x-ray. So I just wanted to show you the progressive problem of the skeletal system. But we also have the nervous system, right? that runs through your skeletal system, runs through your spine. So if your spine is being affected, it will cause and take a toll on your nervous system. And your nervous system will affect the function, the healthy function of every cell, tissue, organ, and system of, body, of the body that it feeds off to. Therefore, having a normal or proper posture or an improved posture would not only improve your skeletal system and reduce the chances of arthritis, but also improve the function of your in internal organs or other systems of your body. Remember where I told you where's the connection? If any of you practice yoga or have uh, 
more of a spiritual connection. I do want to share with you that in the pathway of the spinal alignment and your nervous system, there is chakras of your body. Your sacral and your root chakra and your solar plexus are where your power comes in. Solar plexus is directly controlled or represented by digestion. So when you're sitting in a poor position and you're compressing the abdominal cavity, you're already reducing your effect in your solar plexus. In a lot of cases, it would make a little bit hard to make solid decisions with confidence. This is your power. This is the power to make decisions of right or wrong or right or left, or this is your power powerhouse. Your emotional heart is where to accept and give back love is your thoracic spine. It totally affects your heart and lung, and it also affects your upper GI, and that tends to be right up here. So sitting upright and in a proper posture does not only have a neurological impact of your body and physiologically changes your body, it can even affect your etheric energy, also known as your spiritual or your, your chakras. And uh, obviously keeping your posture upright increases your cognitive abilities, having a better ability to, to forecast and function. It improves your ability to speak. And uh, this is extremely important in girls who have poor posture. This is very, very important. Another factor that I wanted to share with you is uh, musculoskeletal problems. When they become chronic issues, chronic musculoskeletal problems have a direct impact on depression and anxiety. So mental health is also affected by your physical body. And mental health, going back to physical, chemical, and emotional balance, pillars of your health, mental health has a direct effect on your powerhouse, also known as your digestive tract, also being compressed over here. So you're, you fall back into a negative cycle where you could actually reverse the cycle into a positive cycle by creating the corrections. So you have two choices, how to get these corrected. You could do the easy way by getting home kits that actually protect you and correct your home ergonomics. These are basic home ergonomics, especially if you have children that are homeschooling, please, please, please set up their ergonomics because it's so essential to their growth spur and how their body is working. If you already have any neck or radiating pain down your arms, the neck kit is extremely effective. It creates traction strengthens the muscles and helps. If you already know you have poor posture, you need to get this because it's so easy to prevent injuries and prevent damages that later on causes you to make doctor appointments. Take time from your life, from your home, from your family, spend money and also lose time because you're in, in pain. So take preventive measures to protect yourself because being healthy does not discriminate by your socioeconomical level or your, your height, weight, sex, gender, color of your skin. Being healthy is a personal responsibility. And that's what I like to offer you to take care of yourself. Of course, you can do um, move of the month, which is all like sitting on a gym ball or sitting on a, a wobble ball and start building your abdominal muscles. That's very helpful. Make sure you practice breathing when you're sitting and bring your knee to your chest and backwards, kind of like lift up your right arm and your left knee as you're seated in an upright position while you're breathing correctly. And then repeat that 10 times by alternating right hand, left knee, left hand, right knee, and that's gonna be very helpful. Again, let's go back to that nutritional connection, right? The nutritional connection is what you eat, you are what you eat. But let me tell you about how to eat, because a lot of people, you don't need, you could go on Google and there is billions of information about what to eat, what to, to take you, put your hand, and put something in your hand and put it in your mouth. There's billions of information about that. 
But let me tell you a couple of things that what you need to do. Processed foods, if it comes in a box, packaged in a box and it's dry, I personally do not have anything like that in my house. I just don't. Sugar is the number one factor and an aggravation to skin conditions, allergies, and uh, affects your whole entire system. Unfortunately, sugar is the culprit for any kind of problems that are related to gluten. So if you're going to be going on a gluten-free diet, make sure you take out the sh sugar as well. And we're not talking about three-day cleanse, and we're not talking about a two-weeks cleanse. You need to cleanse for three months from sugar, flour, and excessive salt. These are the three things you have to eliminate for three months in order to identify where, what foods you're allergic to that are causing you your problem. Unfortunately, the sugar is so common in every item that we eat that we're not even talking about candy bars. We're not talking about uh, the sweeteners. We're talking about general foods that are packed. They do have sugar. So be very careful and be very careful about the superfood powders that you're purchasing from CVS, especially, or Rite Aid or Walgreens, they have a high content of sugar. So if you like to avoid those and buy something from Whole Foods, Mother's Market, that come in a dark colored jars are going to be very effective. Fruits are extremely effective, but they do have a high source of sugar. So make sure if you are taking fruits, that the last fruit that you eat is going to be around 3 p.m. Start it in the morning, but you got till 3 p.m. No fruit or dried fruits or, or uh, cooked fruits or anything are allowed after 3 p.m. Vegetables are amazing anytime, anywhere, as long as they are not starchy vegetables. Starchy, ve starchy vegetables and fruits have the same rule of thumb. No starchy vegetables or fruits after 3 p.m. Another thing that is very effective to mention here is if you find yourself bloatiness, to be bloated and to have constipation or lack of bowel movement, you need to go on a 16 hour fast diet. That is, I call it the 7-Eleven diet. The last meal is at 7 p.m., the last time you chew. And the, last, the first time you chew again is next morning, 11 o'clock. So I just call it the 7-Eleven. That's 16 hours, no eating, but you can definitely drink. And that does not include alcohol, by the way, drinking. Water, tea, uh, preferably no coffee, but, um, and non-sweetened drinks. There's three things that you need to be aware of, no matter what you eat. Eating too quickly confuses your nervous system and the body goes into a shock and you get bloatiness or you get digestive problems, or you get abdominal cramps. Skipping meals interrupts and puts a, uh, puts a problem into your entire nervous system, gastrointestinal and nervous system function. Keeping your body balanced gives your body a comfort zone that is going to be fine. So let me give you an example that brings it home. If you're going to be picking up your child from school, and uh, you're supposed to be there at five o'clock every afternoon to pick them up. What happens if you keep skipping one or two days, Monday, Wednesday, you forget, or you're late, or you're too early, or you're too late, and you just skip and you just forget to pick them up? You're not going to have a very happy child. Worse than that, you're not going to have a very happy spouse, right? Same thing. With your, with your meals, you cannot skip meals. Your body is on a set clock schedule. It depends on you to feed it at the right time in order for it to function. It's just like any other machine. It needs to be taken care of and it needs to have a system. You put system into your digestive system, then you will reap the benefits of having being healthier, more vivacious, sleeping better, having more energy, just laughing more because you're healthy and you deserve to have that. Distracted when you're eating, Put that phone away. Life does go on if that phone is away for five, 10 minutes. It really does. Life really does go on. So put that, give yourself about 15 to 20 minutes of eating. And instead of being distracted, 
try to identify, uh, you know, I want to share something with you. A wine connoisseur is a specialist when they can detect all the ingredients in the wine and they pair it to the meals that are going to be eaten or what kind of a wine you want to create. Why don't you be your own food connoisseur and identify all the ingredients that you just put in your mouth? If you put a, a fork full of food in your mouth, identify where is the salt? Where is the spices? Do you taste the meat? Do you taste the vegetables? Do you, do you taste the juice? Just identify them, play with it, have fun with it. It is a quiz for yourself. That alone not only allows you to feel full faster, it allows you to chew slower and it allows your digestive system to function under more of a comfortable situation rather than go, 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 quick, 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 uh, confusion or chaos, right? So these are the three things, just applying those three things. You don't have to do anything else. Don't change your diet, but just apply those three things and you notice a huge difference. Take care of your skeletal system. They do cause problems and they do cause affecting you. Know your biomechanics and your ergonomics. If you're interested, I have a full lecture on this on my website, thinkhealthy.com. So please go there and know that. Uh, and if you're using sit-stand desk, please stand during the day and sit in the afternoon. And the worst place to sit is in the middle of your chair. Either sit all the way back or at the edge of your chair. This promotes and hacks the nervous system to be more upright. Just a little side note. A good night's sleep plays a huge role. And a good night's sleep is because of what you put your body through throughout the day. It's reflected at night. What kind of pillow you purchase is one of the most important thing because it does affect your um, acid reflux problems. There are two types of pillows. There's two things you have to address. One is how, what kind of a quality of pillow you want and how it's supposed to function. If you have poor posture and forward head carriage, two, four, six, and three are very effective. If you have, and you can use these to put it on the, in between your knees. All right, but these are the four that are, that I highly recommend. It promotes the curve in your neck and it promotes your uh, spine. Please, if you are uh, a stomach sleeper, use a body pillow to prop you up into more of a side posture, side sleeper, that's gonna be more beneficial. Ergonomics while working is essential because most of our time, most of us spend about four to, 14 hours a day in front of our computers. If you have forward head carriage, please make sure that your eye level is on top of your computer, not your eye, um, your, I'm sorry, your crown of your head is on top of your computer. Or when you're standing, your eye should be, your head should be about 15 degrees above or your chin at 15 degrees above ground. This promotes a better curve in your neck. If you just look straight ahead and your monitor is at your eye level, then what's most ergonomics, ergonomists say, you actually promote a straight neck, but it's not effective, right? You definitely wanna take your head up, lift your head up. If you want to get a fast relief, I hand selected specific items that I have been recommending over the past 26 years to my patients. I put all of them in a kit, so that way you have three steps in putting your body back into care. One, Prevent the aggravating damage, right? So prevent the aggravation by correcting the posture. So there's a posture product in there that corrects your posture. Two, relax the tight muscles. So there are specific items there that allows your muscles, those knots in your upper back, lower back, buttocks area to be relaxed. And once the muscles are relaxed and your body is in a better position, we need to strengthen the area in order to bring your body into more stability. So there's exercise equipments that are there that you can actually exercise and bring your body into proper position. Utilizing 12 weeks of these kits will render you 90% improvement in your symptoms. And that is a poor posture impact and definitely changing that radiating pain or poor posture or head recurrent headaches or overall digestive problem. 
My name is Dr. Romina. I hope this was effective, informative, and beneficial to you. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me. Uh, I'm here to help. I'm here to answer any questions that you may have and uh, look forward to hearing from you. We come to you every Wednesday and your messages are what it helps us to get into correct position, correct item or choose the correct topic that would be beneficial for you. I wish you a wonderful day. Send your messages. We do offer telehealth for questions and answers for consultation. We do offer home kits and we do offer just advice. Have a wonderful day and stay healthy. And don't forget, eat slowly, don't be distracted and don't skip a meal. Have a wonderful day and cheers to your health.